because being in year 11, you have a choice to make at the end of this year. Some of you will have already made it. Some of you will be still considering. Some of you will be still considering. Uh, so you could go into sixth form, you could go into a college, or you could get an apprenticeship. You still need to stay in education for the next two years. So an apprenticeship is a job, but it's a job that focuses around study. So the usual breakdown is you spend 80% of your time physically doing that job, learning by doing, 20% of the time studying towards a qualification. So that qualification will be job related. So whatever field you go into, be it um, gardening, hairdressing, engineering, the qualification you get will be in that field. As a job, you sign a contract of employment. Your employer signs that contract of employment as well. Um, it covers you for pay, hol uh, holiday pay, sick pay. It puts you on the same brackets as anybody else working for that business. Um, from the employer, it covers them in case any disciplinary action needs to take place. That is something that you shouldn't be worried about, but you should be aware of going into it. It is a real job with real responsibilities. Um, pay wise, you can, uh, starting minimum wage is £4.15 per hour, though you can earn anything above there. Depending on the level you're looking at there, the pay tends to increase with each step. So the levels, at the end of your GCSE, so the end of this year, um, you can apply for a level two or a level three. So these are minimum requirements, uh, you need to have finished at school and already be 16 at that point. So as long as you're 16 either already or by the time you finish at school, you can start an apprenticeship as soon as you have finished. A level two. So to get onto this, you need to pass your English and maths. Um, it's the same caveat as what it would be with sixth form or college. If you haven't got your English and maths, you can still get a placement, but you would be expected to resit those while you are doing the course. Uh, the course lasts one to two years, depending on how the employer sets it up and on completion, providing you pass everything, you will gain a qualification that is the equivalent of five grade five GCSEs. Now that steps nicely into a level three. So most employers at level three ask for a five grade five, um, ask for five grade five GCSEs. Again, the course lasts one to two years and on completion, providing you pass everything, you will gain a qualification that is the equivalent of three grade C A levels. So some of you may be thinking, oh, well, that's well and good, but I'm going to go into college, I'm going to go into sixth form. Um, if you're considering a work based education after that, you could apply for a four, five or six. So these are all higher based um, to get on. You need to have further studies, so something from college, A levels or to have already passed a level three apprenticeship. Fours and fives are quite similar. So I can't give you a starting grade that you need because it differs from company to company. But the course takes two to four years, uh, depending on the company. And um, on completion, providing you pass, you will gain a higher qualification. So that's something that's higher than your A-levels, but not as high as a degree. This could be a foundation degree, or it could be a course specific qualification. So something that you need for your day-to-day -day running in that area. You could also apply for a level six. So this is a degree level. This is currently what uh, Jackie is doing at the moment. Uh, the course will take um, three to six years to complete and on completion, providing you pass, you will gain a degree. So exactly the same as what you would at university. Not gonna go into any more depth because I will be handing over. Um, an apprenticeship is uh, a job, but it's focused around studies. So there's many different ways in which you can do those studies. It will be work placed, so you will be actually doing that job, learning by being hands on. But more than that, you can be assigned a mentor or a tutor who works in that business. That's somebody that knows that job inside out. They've built up experience and trust within the company. They may have gone through the apprenticeship route themselves. They're your sounding block. You can ask them questions, you can shadow them, you can learn from mistakes they've made. It can be online learning. So um, in theory in this, you're given all of the course information and it's a case of going off and completing certain pieces of work. So um, 
you've got the curriculum, you've got your deadlines, you've got all the resources. Um, the employer and the training provider will be checking in, see if you need any support or um, that you are actually doing your work. Uh, that's a two way street as well. So if you're struggling with anything, you can go to them and they can provide extra support through that. It could be classroom based learning, either on site <laughs> or off site. Um, hours wise, you can do a couple of hours a day. You could do a day a week. You could do one week per month. However, the setup is there would be a minimum of 20 percent of your time set aside for study and that 20 percent is paid for. Uh, if you are considering um, an apprenticeship, especially at the end of year 11, uh, I recommend going to the following website, so www.amazingapprenticeships.com forward slash FAA. It's got some really good resources and it links into the government website. They've got lots of jobs on there, so have a look, especially if you're considering it either as a plan A or a plan B at the end of this year. Um, as I mentioned, it's pretty much the end of Apprenticeship Week, but if you are interested in what we're doing, uh, have a look on the Twitter or send me an email. And I am now going to pass over. So over to you, Jackie, to continue. Um, thank you so much, Dan. Um, could you let me know if you can see my screen? Yes. Thank you for that. Good morning, Yale Evans, and welcome to my brief presentation. Um, my name is Jackie, as Dan mentioned, and I am a first year degree level apprentice at an international company called KPMG. For the next few minutes, I just want to um, tell you my story and the process and tips on how I got to where I am as an audit apprentice in the big four accounting firms. Now, so my current roles and responsibilities. So to begin with, um, uh, I want to quickly explain what an audit is. Essentially, it's just looking at financial statements of companies. Now, um, I work in the financial services department and we deal with clients across banking, insurance, asset management. Um, some of the companies you might have heard of, such as Next, Boots, JP Morgan and numerous more. Um, the work I do is provided to me by a senior member of the team. So when working on a client, there are there is a various level of expertise within the group. And since I'm in my first year, the level of work I do is to my ability. And as I move up, the difficulty is going to increase. Um, Currently, my work can range from anything between um, testing samples with clients, agreeing figures to invoices, doing bank reconciliations. These are terms you might have not heard of, but it's it's just finance terms. Um, so my typical day, I guess it depends on whether I'm studying because I'm I'm working towards a degree. So um, I, either I'm studying or working on a client. If I'm studying, then I would make sure um, I allocate enough time within my day to do practice, practice papers or watch online lectures or if I'm working on a client then the team would have a morning call since everything now is virtual um, where the manager or the in charge would allocate tasks for the day. The recruitment process. So the recruitment process for my role was quite lengthy. So as you can see on the screen that's um, that's the step I went through um, but this this depends on the company you apply for and the uh, as Dan mentioned the level you apply for for you guys it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be that long it would be quite short if you go right after um, leaving year 11 or if you go out after leaving uh, let's say BTEX or A levels then it would be a bit lengthier um, so the first step for me was the application form and this was like two to three pages long and like your normal application forms it did require details about my academic and personal um, information and then then came the audio submission now um this is where you had to record an audio of you answering three questions the timing on this was critical i had to ensure i spoke enough to explain my answers but not over two minutes um, thankfully, I did manage to do it in one minute and 58 seconds. To prepare for this, what I did was I, I wrote down my answers. I remember sitting down with my um, psychology teacher and we, we planned out everything. And, and then I recorded myself. Think of it as like a voice note. So um, yeah, I managed to do it in one minute and 58 seconds. Then came the logical reasoning test. Now, um, 
this was an online assessment so a, a link was sent to me and this was timed and it was quite fairly short um, and the exam the exam assessed like my problem solving skills and then after that came the assessment center now the assessment center you know, i had to go to the um, kpmg office in birmingham and um, to prepare for this day i did do my research and i i practiced interview questions um i when i on the day i met quite a few uh, other other potential apprentices that were applying for the same thing as me. Um, we were we were invited to this room and we had to do a group task first. And it was it was quite good because we uh, we were told to discuss a topic and the topic was charity. So um, we had to plan as if KPMG were sponsoring an event and you had to talk about if you could set up a charity event, what would you do? Who how would you allocate the jobs? And so, yeah, that, that was quite fun. And then after that, we we all went one by one to do an interview that was like an hour long. It was quite stressful, but um, the interviewer was quite nice. Um, after the interviews, we all went back to the conference room. So it's like it's like this big room with just like uh, a table and a bunch of people sitting around and people are assessing you. Um, but you're you're doing your own thing, but they're still writing down notes. Um, the whole process of uh, that day took like half half a day. A few weeks later, I did receive a phone call saying I got accepted, and literally that has to be one of the proudest moments of my life. Like me, I remember me and my family we were just jumping up and down. Okay, so why I think apprenticeships are great. I do believe apprenticeships are one of the greatest opportunities available for young people. Now, the growth in this option has been phenomenal, and I wanted to give a few reasons why I think as a school leaver, apprenticeships are great. So one of the key benefits is that there's no student debt. Now, you've heard of that. So when you say say you uh, you decide to do an apprenticeship after um, sixth form or college and instead of going to university, you decide um, I want to do an apprenticeship, you you save yourself from getting a debt 27k or more this is uh, this is literally one of the reasons why i was more inclined on going down this ro um, road i don't like, the way i think about it is i don't want to be paying off student loans when i'm in a good job i want to take all the money i can home um uh, so yeah student loans i do think for personally they they are a burden and uh, with an apprenticeship you get the qualification the experience the skills and payment um the way the way I think about it again is um, if the if the career path that you want to go into requires university. So let's say you wanted to go into medicine, um, you can't do that through an apprenticeship. Then then you'd go um, go to the degree level, degree route and pursue it through that way. Whereas um, if the career path that you want to go into doesn't re require the degree route, or you're not too sure on what you want to do, then um, you should do your research and be be open to other options. Um, you remember that the world is changing and employers are looking for employability skills as well as qualifications. So uh, therefore, it is quite important in order to stand out. Um, you need both. You need the employability skills and the qualification. And apprenticeships for me provide just that. Um, nowadays, you can do an apprenticeship in most fields. Um, accounting and finance is the one I'm in. Uh, you can do an engineering. I know that JCB do quite good apprenticeships. There's Jaguar Land Rover. Um, the, you can do it in media, technology, even some areas of law, NHS. My apprenticeship has provided me with quite a lot of independence, and I am so thankful for that. Even, even things like my study, I can decide uh, within the day when I want to study. If I if I work best in the morning, which I do, I make sure I put my revision all in the morning and then take a break in the afternoon. And maybe if if it's closer to the exam, I'll jump in in the evening again. So as mentioned, being accepted into um, the big four is literally one of my greatest achievements. I have completed my level three. Um, I, I am going on to my level four. And by the end of this year, I should be on my level five. Um, by the time I finish my um, apprentice apprenticeship, I will be a qualified accountant and uh, I will also have the employability skills. The great thing, another great thing about apprenticeships is the company that you work for they they tend to keep you on because imagine somebody spending so much money on training you they're going to want to keep you on because they spent so much money on you so that's another perk um it is quite difficult to get jobs nowadays so it's good to have as much experience as you can 
OK, so my advice to others, um, my top picks for advice would be those on the screen. Now, as a school leaver, it is quite significant to carry out as much research as you can. This involves like looking and reading into your interests. It's not good um, enjoying a subject at school and taking it further if you if you if you don't think about like the bigger picture um, as well as the sort of short term decisions. So the short term decisions could be, oh, do I want to? Um, if you're applying to a school, these could be the short term decisions. Do I apply to this school, this school or that? Whereas uh, the long term decision is where do I see myself in 10 years time? That's a dreadful question uh, and to think about. But you've got to think like that because the job jobs nowadays um, require you to think like that. Um, yeah, so I one of one of my advice is, is to do your research. So um, it doesn't matter whether you're going to university or whether you're um, going to through the apprenticeship route or whether you're just leaving school and then going into work. You need to do as much research as you can. As you can. Um, for example, if you say you enjoy a particular subject, then you can do research into the career path that subject can take you into. Um, Another thing I would say is have more than one option. Pick out as many things as you can, not one thing. So if you don't limit yourself to one interest, oh, that's my interest, I want to go into that and that's it. Be open, okay, if, if uh, later my interest might change. So it's this, this or that or something like that. Anyways, another one is speaking to someone. Now, this is so important. We hear about this for everything. Now, speaking to someone is so important. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be one group of people, but as many groups of people that you feel the need to. Um, it can range from your friends, your family, to even your careers advisor. Gathering thoughts and advice would help you come to a decision that is best suited for you. If the people you want to speak to, let's say they're not aware of what an apprenticeship is, then do your research. And remember that in order to be taken seriously, you need to show your passion. And the way you can show your passion is if you know what you're talking about. So do as much research, familiarize yourself with the uh, some of the stuff that Dan mentioned about the levels, what, um, what, what the career path next is, where it can take you, what is the qualification. Another advice I would give is to seize all opportunities. Now, opportunities come and go. And if apprenticeship is something you're interested in, then you need to explore all avenues. It goes back to the point I was saying before to um, keep your options open. You may want to attend, let's say, events like these, or you, want, you might want to attend career fairs and just learn. You're in the 11. It's not it's not like you're so late to learning. You you, you can do your research now. Start now. It's, it's, it's a great opportunity because it's National Apprenticeship Week. Everybody, uh, everybody's uh, like flooding social media and um, websites with all of this information. Just print it out, read and do your research. Um, my next two advice do go hand in hand. So if you want something bad enough, you need to make sure in order to get it, um, you put the work in to get there. For me, I know that I want to be a part of the big four accounting firms. So uh, basically the company I work for um, is one of the biggest accounting firms in the world. So if I, yeah, I want to be a part of that company and I want to be represented by them. So I make sure I put time to study. I make sure I, I put the best of my ability to my work. Every piece of work I do, I know that it's like a puzzle. So I need to make sure um, my work fits the standard of everybody else on the team. This is this is the end of my present presentation and the start of my apprenticeship story. I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much, you guys, for listening to me. And I hope you found that to be useful. If you want more information, then feel free to get in contact with the Young Apprentice, uh, Apprenticeship Ambas Ambassador Network. Thank you. Hi, you're very quiet again. Oh, you're back in again now. Oh, can you hear me? Sorry, can you hear me now? Only just, Mr. Royal. Yes. Um, sorry, I've, I've That's got muted. Um, Jakaya, thank you very much for that. I am just going to put you on the spot and ask you the same two questions I did yesterday because I think that's really valuable. So um, first, first and foremost, um, can you just tell the students um, how much money uh, you earn per year being a student who's just come out, you know, who's, who's just 19? And so how much money do you earn each year? And then how much does that equate to how much you take home each month after tax? Yeah, sure. Um, so currently, since I'm, I'm in my first year, I'm earning annually £17,500. Um, 
And the take home money. So obviously, as you get older, you have to pay tax and national insurance and all that. So the take home money for me is just above 15K. Yeah. And so and so I think we said yesterday that's about £1,300 a month, didn't we? After yes. Tax. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So if year 11, if you take that into account then, so rather than leaving college, uh, I'm going to do a degree and having no money and then having to um, pay out for, for lots of other things as well. And then debt on the end of it. Instead, you could be, you know, in a really good company like Jakaya. Um, you know, you could be earning a good salary and still getting your qualifications and that essential work experience behind it as well. So it's something that's really, really worth considering. Now, year 11, as I said, there, there are still some of you who haven't made decisions yet about what you want to do. And apprenticeships may uh, or may not be the route for you. Um, but as Jakaya said, seize, seize the opportunity. You now have a week off. Um, anything, any time invested in looking at colleges and courses and things like that is time invested in yourselves. Um, so that is really important. It's your future. It's not your parents' future. It's not the school's future. It's your future. So you need to spend some time over half term thinking about what you want to do. Obviously, you can speak to, to John Knight when you're back in school after half term if you're still unsure. But, you know, there are lots of things that you can do. Don't bury your head in the sand. Start looking at apprenticeship opportunities. Start looking at colleges uh, if you haven't done so already and be thinking about what you want to do. And come and talk to, to myself, talk to Mr. Walker, talk to your form tutors, talk to your subject teachers. But start asking questions so that we can help you to find the, the right route for you in the future. So finally, can I just say a, a massive thank you for Jakaya to giving, for giving up her time this morning uh, and to Dan for his presentation on apprenticeships. Hopefully we've all learned something uh, a little bit new. Um, so thank you guys uh, very much for all your time and effort this morning. Um, year 11, have a fantastic half term. Um, but as I say, do something towards uh, investing in your future um, during the next week. Daniel, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, thank you for having us. If there are any questions that you want to ask about today, uh, we have run slightly over, so send them through Mr. Royal. Um, he can either answer them or forward them onto ourselves. Uh, but yep, yeah, think about where you're going, get a plan A, get a plan B, and uh, all the best of luck. Okay, thank you very much, Daniel. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Have a good half term. Bye. Bye. Yeah, have a great afternoon, everyone. See you, bye. Are you still there, Mr. Walker? I am. I'm just about to leave. I've got a meeting. Oh, have you? Right, I'll let you go then if you've got a meeting. Yeah, you, I'll catch, did you I'll catch you later, sir. Okay, no worries. Cheers. See you. See you, bye.